Well, the time has finally freaking come. We are going to be putting the prop shaft on this. I got a brand new 2000 V70R prop shaft from uh, Faulkner Volvo. Last one in the country and presumably the world. So again, big shout out to Faulkner Volvo and the parts guys for always helping me out um, and getting me things real fast. Um, so thanks again to them. And let's get into the, this video, get this thing installed and start messing around with this thing all wheel drive. Okay, that new prop shaft came in. So I ended up getting a 2000 V70R prop shaft. It is part number, here it is, 94 or 946-3300. This is the last one in the USA. Um, I don't know if they're gonna be on back order, if you're gonna be able to get more, but um, I picked up the last one in the USA and it's really not as big as I thought it would be. And it's very lightweight. Um, but if you do do a 2000 V70R drive shaft, it actually has the biggest center carrier bearing and you can actually upgrade to this drive shaft if you have a late 98. All you got to do is when you buy this um, center support plate, which is 9474483, you can see the center to center distance is actually smaller. It's 2.25 inches. So you just have to drill this one hole up a little bit more from here and then that will uh, allow the carrier bearing to bolt onto this plate no problem. So um, what I actually had to do is down here, you can see these two, there's um, little inserts that go into the metal. And unfortunately before, you know, a while ago, um, the ones here actually, um, the bolt snapped inside of them and then these actually pop out and they actually fell out and are long gone can't buy anything like that from Volvo. But what I did do is I just got an M8 by 125 nut. I drilled this hole out and this fits in there perfectly. I'm gonna put a couple tacks around it so it can't spin. And then we will be back up and running on uh, this. And you can see, you can see this one looks like this. And now we're basically just gonna have something like this that'll, you know, screw right in. So I'm gonna get that welded up. And then after that, we can bolt the prop shaft to the plate. And once the prop shaft's bolted to the plate, we can kind of put everything in, start lining up the CVs and everything. And I have pretty much everything to put this in now. I just gotta get these nuts welded on, get that plate all situated and get everything over here all situated and we can bolt that on. I bought new washers and bolts for the CVs and everything. And I bought a new clutch switch and I bought a couple other things from Vava that I'm gonna show later, but there she is, the 2000 V70R prop shaft. The uh, whole bolt, nut, whatever situation all fixed up. Just ran a little bead around that nut, so that's not going to uh, come out or anything or spin when we are torquing these bolts. Got all the new bolts in. I think I'm just going to throw some. I don't plan on putting the prop shaft in tonight, but I'm going to throw some of the um, Pour 15 over this exposed metal on these welds. Let that cure overnight, and then... Yeah, all I need to do is bolt the carrier bearing to the plate, and then you can take that whole plate with one hand and kind of juggle it up there while you're putting the bolts with the other. This isn't too heavy, so it's not that big of a deal, but I did test fit and it does look like it's gonna line up. And then of course there are washers and new uh, red thread lock hex bolts that I have too that I will put on when we do the final install. But I just went ahead and I checked every single bolt in the rear and they're all still tight, nothing loosened up. I didn't forget to loosen anything. These ones got a little loose, so I tightened them back up. I assume as the surge tank kind of settles in, um, eventually I, you know, I'll just keep tightening these until they stop. I mean, they didn't loosen a lot, but they just need to be tightened. Other than that, we just still need to torque the rear axle nuts. I got them at 87 pound feet, but I got to do the additional 60 degrees and everything's good back here. I checked all of the suspension and everything and some of the bolts under here. I'm gonna go over everything up top. Just make sure we don't have any leaks or anything, or not leaks, but any loose bolts um, that are gonna cause issues when we go to launch this thing all wheel drive for the first time. I did beat it up a little bit last video, so I'm pretty confident in it. But yeah, I'm gonna keep checking some stuff up there. And after that, I can go pick up my tires. Everything is fitting real nice. I don't know if it has like a certain direction it has to go. I don't think so because everything lines up pretty like well right now. I don't know, I'll have to research it. I doubt it would be directional. It looks like the lengths are exactly the same, 
from carrier to flange. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's looking really good. And it's gonna be really cool to finally have a freaking prop shift and have this thing be all wheel drive. So let's get these bolts in, let's get these washers in and get all this torque down so I can freaking drive this thing all wheel drive. I cannot wait. All right, prop shaft is officially on. Got all these bolts torqued to 25 newton meters. You can see it fits real nice. It's very far away from the exhaust, so I'm not too worried about the CV and its grease getting cooked. No clearance issues here with the bigger carrier. Plenty of clearance, got all these torqued down. And of course, got all these torqued down. Got everything torqued down to 25 pound feet. Shaft's in, I'm happy. I am going to put the new wheels on. I got brand new mounted tires and everything. We're gonna put all that on, and then I wanna do a uh, spin test with it off the, uh, off the ground on the lift, make sure all four wheels are spinning. So let's get that done real quick, and then we can get this thing driving. Oh yeah! Just did about 10 miles with the prop shaft in. Everything is working awesome. Still no issues with the CVs back here. No leaks to the rear diff. Prop shafts in. No issues with the rubbing against anything or hitting or vibrating. It's definitely in. And up here, still no issues. No leaks, no nothing. So at this point, um, I feel really confident in this thing. Uh, we're going to boost leak test it soon and clean up a whole bunch of things. But first, I just want to rip on a little bit. I got It's got a pretty good tune in it. It's got a plenty good tune in it for uh, hitting wastegate pressure. So everything looks really good. And I am going to go uh, mess around with this thing on the street and bring you guys along for the ride. I've been cruising around for a decent amount of time. So I got really good angle gear pressure and temp's only at 126. That's after like... 15 miles but i mean it's only 50 degrees out so there's not a lot of heat really but it's staying really cool so there's no i don't think there's going to be any issues with like heat transfer due to uh you know heat soak or whatever but angle gear is looking really good just cruising it around did a little bit of a roll and man this thing's going to be fast i did a little bit of roll and I, it either i think either one of the vacuum lines blew off and it cut the engine or the rear kicked out a little bit but this thing's gonna be fast. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep playing around with it on the street, just getting it tuned up and everything. And then um, I bought a little three gallon compressor. I'm never gonna invest in air tools. I mean, electric's where it's at. So I just bought a little three gallon pancake. It's on sale for like 30 bucks and some hose and a, a Schrader uh, valve thingy majigger. And I'm gonna boost leak test the entire system. I have a piece that hooks up to the intake. So gonna do that shortly and then we can get this thing on a real nice wastegate tune, about 20, 22 pounds. Holy moly, she sprung a leak there, bud. Uh-oh, looks like the pump. I don't know, looks like it's leaking from the pump. I thought maybe the front seal popped out, but I don't see any of that leaking. So, there's something going on with the pump. It's still got plenty of fluid in it, so I didn't run it dry. So that's good. Let me touch it, see if it's hot. Yeah, it's not that hot. Let's get the temp gone. So I don't, I don't think we did any damage. I had to drive it like five miles home. But um, 120, 120, eh, 120, which is what it was showing on the computer. So no problems. So, I don't know, it's probably a good time for a fluid change on that thing anyway, because um, it's been 120 miles, we can see how it looks. Also got a little leak coming from here, from the PCV, because I mentioned in a different video, but my PCV system, how I have it modified. Yeah, if you look up there, you can kind of see it's uh, the silicone sweating a little bit, because this thing is kind of just, the JB weld kind of broke. So I gotta fix that because we got a little drip coming from here. Just engine oil, not a big deal. Other than that, I'm gonna get this mess cleaned up. It's really not that big of a mess and hopefully I didn't lose too much fluid. And uh, what else? Yeah, I want to um, 
just keep playing with the car. My seatbelt's giving me some trouble, so I sprayed that with some silicone oil. It seems to be working better. But continuing to go over the car, no issues in the rear. And uh, I gotta keep playing with things.
keep working on things. I gotta redo the PCV box up front and um, a couple other small little things up there and boost leak test the entire front. But this viscous coupler, it's no good. I don't know if it's broken or not working, but like the wheel spin, the tack just goes anytime the front wheels like break loose. It's it's working, like I feel the rear pushing and usually at the end of a launch, it'll like hit me real hard and you can hear it clunk, but like something's not right with that viscous coupler. Either it's broken or I just don't understand, right? I didn't understand from the beginning how, how like it was gonna work. And I really don't like that viscous coupler. I think I'm gonna end up just locking it full time 50-50 because that viscous coupler is gonna be a no-go on track track launches because like it, you really have to get it hot and preheat it for it to work off a launch. And like, there's no way to do that at the drag strip and a burnout's not gonna be enough to do that. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to keep playing around with it. You can buy new ones still from Volvo they're 1300 bucks, but like, I, I think it's always still just gonna be very front wheel dominant with that viscous. I thought that viscous was gonna just lock up real hard anytime the front started slipping, but it, it doesn't seem to transfer any torque to the rear. I mean, you can see the videos, it's just, it sounds like front wheel drive wheel spin where it just hits the limiter and just stays there. So I don't know, we're gonna have to keep playing with it. I mean, I'm really happy with it. Don't get me wrong, the car hauls, but that viscous is just, it's not what I expect. I don't know if mine's broken. It's 20 years old, has 200,000 miles on it. I did the test with one wheel off the ground. It tested perfect, but I don't know, maybe that fluid is just too dry and it just can't get that torque transferred. So I don't know, I could buy a new one. I could weld it. Um, I could eliminate it with like a shaft I can design in CAD or go to haul decks. I don't know, we're gonna do some thinking, but for the first all wheel drive test drive, let's go. Prop shaft's working, angle gear is working so well. 120, 140 degrees, it's not hot, it's not heat soaking, it's doing great. I fixed the issue with the leak. I just tightened a few fittings. I'm probably gonna drain the oil out and replace it because I don't know how much leaked out, but definitely not all of it. I'd say maybe like 50 milliliters, if that. But anyway, I'm excited. We're gonna maybe keep chugging along. I might take a couple week break. I'm getting pretty tired. Um, or maybe we'll just start fixing up some small easy things up here, but it's all-wheel drive. It's driving. I'm exhausted um, And Yeah, we're, we're just gonna keep working on on the winter dyno it right drive it launch it a lot. I got a little like Whoops, I got a little industrial area over there. I just been no one bothers me. I can do whatever I want there There's no one ever there So stay tuned guys. This thing is freaking driving. It's all-wheel drive. It's ripping it's ripping, but it's not where I want it to be yet. And that's okay because this is a big project. See you next time, guys.